let's talk about something important in considering a, a studio strobe. And like, if you go into a camera store, someone might be considering to get a studio strobe, and they'd be like, "I would be like the camera store won't ever talk to you about this. Most of them there don't know anything about it." And say your camera has a uh, sync speed of 250th of a second. Your camera, more than likely, obviously, is a shutter plane uh, um, uh, camera, like a Nikon or a Canon or a typical Sony. Not a leaf shutter. So we're just talking about shutter plane. And you're looking at, like, uh, some junky pro photo stuff. Well, isn't that special? Now, this is a video about T1 times, and I'm going to try to make it really, really simple so it's very, very simple to understand. And the, kind of the best analogy that I've thought of is uh, having a cow of light uh, trying to pass through a needle of time. And when it comes to cheap studio strobes, I've actually got a graph here, I'm like a pro photo. At half power, uh, let's say you've got 250 of a second sync on your Canon which is about right, 250th. Same thing with Nikon. I'm not talking about high-speed sync. And high-speed sync is pulsing light. Studio strobes don't pulse light like speed lights. High-speed sync on a speed light, something different. It's actually brrr, it's pulsing the light. And that's why you get a lot less power because it's constantly flashing the speed. I'm talking about studio strobes. So you get 250th of a second on your Canon or your Nikon. And you're like, well, I'm going to buy this junky studio strobe. It's like, well, isn't that special? What that means, and I'll let you take a look at the graph here, at half power, the unit becomes almost unusable with your Canon or Nikon or Sony if you want to shoot at maximum sync speed because at half power, um, the flash duration <laughs> is a lot huger than 1 250th of a second. Now, it's the curve at the very, whoops, at the curve at the very bottom here which I hate iPads. iPads love to scroll through stuff very quickly. It's the uh, green curve right here at the bottom, which you're probably getting a reflection. Anyway, up here is an Einstein. And up here is the Einstein in action mode. The same Einstein unit, or the IGBT controlled units uh, from Paul C. Buff, at half power, you're already at one thousandth of a second. The cheap studio strobes down here at half power, you are actually you know, well below the sync speed of a conventional focal plane shutter, which means that if you want to drop, um, you say, well, I'm going to do an indoor shoot or whatever, I'm going to do a shoot of this model, and I only need, unless you want to back your studio strobe up about, you know, 30 feet or something to get light fall off, I'm going to shoot at like one-tenth of a power, which this is about typical, you know, at about 12 feet. That means that what they really make it very simple is that those cheap studio strobes, when they actually pulse the light, all of them actually pulse the light like this. They'll actually peak out and then drop out. Say down here we got 50% discharge, 25%, 90%. The cheap strobes, the way they work on voltage control for releasing uh, that light, is they basically drag their ass. And what this means is that you'd be wondering what the hell is up with your photos. you think, well, this studio strobe is weak. And it is weak, but it's not truly weak. What is happening is, is that even at 1 250 of a second, those uh, studio strobes at half power and less are dragging their ass so slowly that at 1 250 of a second, which is seemingly slow, it's not slow for a uh, sync speed for uh, flash photography or strobe photography, it is still too damn fast for these studio strobes, like the Pro Photo Compact or the Ellen Chrome. People always talk about. People are always asking about Ellen Chrome. Okay, this is a typical shooting situation here. Okay, at uh, one sixteenth power, the Ellen Chrome is already at um, one two hundred fiftieth of a second. If you drop below that, so if you have your uh, your Ellen Chrome at like uh, six or seven feet from your model you're going to be like at 132nd or 164th power. It means that uh, at 250 of a second sync speed, you know, your your camera sh uh, your camera's uh, uh, shutter speed, the focal plane shutter, is already going too damn fast for the release of power that's dragging its ass out of those studio strobes. Um, I actually want to give you a link below 
and uh, lets you uh, take a look at things to explain things uh, simpler. Um, as is typical of basically every speed light at full power, and of course power variation uh, varies, um, at full power on a... Um, like on a Nikon speed light of any variety for the past two decades. Uh, the T1 time is basically at 1 1,000th of a second, which, for example, like on this leaf shutter here, where it can sync at any shutter speed, that means that I can't dial. I can, but I'm not getting any advantage. I can't take it up to 1 4,000th of a second at full power. Well, you think, I'm going to take it up to 1 4,000th. You say you're at half power, and everything is fine at 1 1,000th of a second with your Fuji X100T. I'm at half power of my speed light at 1 1,000th uh, 1, of a second. I'm going to take it up to 1 4,000th of a second, but I'm going to up my light. I'm going to turn it up to full power. You're not getting any advantage because the the uh, speed light is already maxed out in that it's dragging its butt at 1 1,000th of a second, which is rather huge, but you've dropped your shutter speed down to 1 4,000th of a second. So what you have here even though it's a leaf shutter instead of a focal plane shutter, what you have here is that the flash, as far as its discharge curve, is dragging its butt relative to the shutter speed that you have. And the one major advantage of the Pulse Buff, as I explained in the prior video about the magic that you can actually do, I mentioned in the prior video to this one that the magic you can do with the X100T, for example, is using a single unit like this at half power, which has a, a flash duration and action mode of one... Uh, one two thousandth and uh, at uh, stu two stops uh, below uh, full at uh, one four thousand four hundred it means at one four thousandth of a second I can illuminate the side as of a big ass building with a single one of these units at distance which means it has the relative flash output power excuse me the strobe output power of like a two thousand watt second monoblock which is some serious hardcore <clears throat> power serious power um, too much power is not always a good thing. There's issues in the studio strobes, like if you're doing macro or product photography, where you want to drop it as low as you can, in which case two and a half watt seconds is way more than enough. Um, but this is the important thing to consider when buying a studio strobe, is that what is its T1 flash duration relative to its setting? Um, when you start dropping in charge on uh, the uh, monoblock units, the cheaper ones, is that uh, they drag their butt more and more, and they just they, they slowly have a dissipation curve that goes like this to like this. It just slowly drags its ass, and what happens is is that it's too slow even for like one two hundredth of a second or one two hundred fiftieth of a second on uh, your sync speed for your uh, sh your focal plane shutter on your Canon, your Nikon, or your Sony. And uh, that's an issue that people won't tell you about because everybody's always saying, well, what about Studio Stro? What about Ellen Chrome? What about Profoto? No, no bueno. As the Russians would say, govno. It's, uh, it's uh, no bueno, no. And uh, that means that you're actually buying a strobe that has limited use capabilities. That means if you want to drop the power down, see, when you buy like a Profoto or an Ellen Chrome, you're typically going to use it in a portrait setting or situation, and you're going to want to sync at 1 250th of a second or 1 200th, and that means it's dragging its ass too much at 10 or 8 feet, which is typical strobe distance to your subject. And this is where these strobes suck. And this is the huge advantage of these units, is that, that they're dropping the charge so fast, it doesn't matter. If I am using 1 250th of a second uh, sync speed with a focal plane shutter like a Canon or an Icon, or if I'm using 1 1 1 4,000th of a second on the leaf shutter on the uh, Fuji X100T. Um, so check the link below and you can uh, actually get a description and if you want to go more into this. And you'll actually see the discharge curvatures relative to power and how these things have to match up to your shutter speeds. Typically this is not an issue, but it is an issue with cheaper studio strobes. And it is an issue with high-speed sync photography. I know Sony has a leaf shutter camera. Hasselblad does, and uh, Fuji does, their X70, their X100. And, you know, there needs to be more leaf shutter uh, cameras out there. But uh, uh, T1 time uh, flash durations in uh, a thousandth of a second as far as the rating is important to know. 
because if it becomes unusually slow and very slow to drag its ass in discharging the charge and say one thirty second of a power say three stops or four stops or five stops below full power then it kind of becomes a uh, a despicable tool that is not what you think you bought into it's like well this is great this cheap studio strobe's got a uh, output of three hundred twenty watt seconds it's like well that's fine and all but if you want to dial down the power and not you know bleach out the eyeballs of the subject that you're shooting then what's going to happen is it's it's going to be so slow that uh, it's not even going to be fast enough to meet up with uh, your sync speed on your damn camera at one two hundred or one two hundred fiftieth of a second. So this is the description of T1 times, and I, I think I did I found no other videos on YouTube about mentioning T1 times or their importance. They do have an importance, and uh, and especially if you're thinking about picking out some cheap crap studio strobe so then it does become pretty damn important so anyway i explained that if it's too much to handle then you know oh well you know sometimes i get into the technical subjects that uh, bore the hell out of people but somebody out there wants to know about it because i've been asked about it before a few times so bye